Take it away, Kevin. Hi, Nina. Thank you so much for that great introduction. And hello, everyone. Welcome back to yet another AIM webinar 2023. Here we are. This time, we're talking about social networks impact on information management. Now, look, we don't often think of social media when it comes to, <clears throat> excuse me, information governance. But the fact is that social networks are information repositories and important content uh, for businesses of all kinds. And look, there are about four and a half billion social media users in the world today. 72% of Americans use social media. The amount of time that adults use social media across all of the platforms is now higher than ever, at least an hour and a half per day. I don't know. I probably do more. What about you? Uh, Facebook is the most used platform. Uh, about 93% of social media users use Facebook. Instagram is in second place with almost 80%. LinkedIn is at about 17%. And that is 17% of LinkedIn users use that platform every day. And about 50% of LinkedIn users use it every month. So as a result, there are roughly 2.5 quintillion bytes of content added to social media every day. Quintillion bytes, 2.5 quintillion, quintillion bytes. How much is that? That's a boatload. Let's just say it that way. So clearly, when it comes to managing information and content, we just can't overlook social media. There are, of course, the big platforms that we know, like Twitter and Facebook to consider, but things like company blogs and community sites and customer chat features all represent potentially risky and potentially valuable sources of information. So the question for us today is, how is social content part of our strategy for records management? Is your social media network just another silo that's being overlooked in inf information governance? Uh, or is it something that is included? I'd like to know more about that from you today. And ultimately, how do we manage it? And that's what we'll be exploring today, some essential factors to consider with respect to social networks impact on information management. <clears throat> and we'll investigate how to include social media content in our strategies. How should we factor social content silos into records management? What part should internal social communities and other customer facing social content play in our strategies? And how can social networks better fuel workflow and process improvement? So if you've ever questioned how to bring social content within the scope of intelligent information management, then get set for another informative session today with our guest. But before I introduce Steve today, I want to invite each and every one of you to join us today and be part of this discussion. After all, AIM is a community of experts, real world practitioners. So we want to hear from you too. What are your thoughts on this? What are your suggestions? What are your challenges? And what are you doing? Um, and what do you really want to know about managing social content for your organization? So please post your comments, post your questions in the Q&A feature, and in the later part of the session today, we'll work to get to as many of those comments and questions as we can. So now, with all of that said, let's bring our guest in today. I would like to introduce today Steve Wiseman. Steve is a principal consultant at Holly Group. He's an expert in compliance, content management, records management, business process management. Steve has spent 25 years plus uh, equipping clients to better find, leverage, and secure business critical information. He's been honored as an AIM fellow and is the recipient of AIM's prestigious award of merit. So Steve, welcome to the program today. Are you with us? I'm here. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone for joining us. Well, tell us more, Steve. What's your take on all of this? Um, how how should we factor social content into our records management and information governance efforts? It's funny you should ask. And pardon me while I put my head on a swivel here. I've got just a short handful of slides, no more than three or 400, don't worry. Right. Um, just to kind of set the stage. Um, what a, a lot of people, when I talk about this with clients or at conferences like like AIM, um, the, one of the first questions I get when I start talking about social media 
is, is a bunch of head scratching. It's like uh, social posts are like the antithesis of records, aren't they? You know, when when social started, it was famous for being kind of like the Wild West. You know, it's it's it was designed to be populist and and uncontrolled. And even though it's a great many years later since these things first rolled out, it still kind of is. Um, I pause here because debating whether or not to make some sort of an Elon Musk uh, reference, which I guess I just did. Um, but that just shows you how Wild West like this still is. And you think that, well, that's the opposite of records, right? Because records, uh, the whole point there is to apply discipline to, to these things. So how do they fit together? Do they fit together? So here's a scenario for you, one of three. This one is one that I created by sort of melding together a bunch of different kinds of case studies. So let's just imagine for a moment that you're you're on the board of an established regional airline and it's a tough business to be in. It's hard to grow routes because of limited gate availability at airports. Um, so really the way to do it, a lot of airlines say, well, we'll buy somebody. They already have the gates that we need and it'll allow us to open up to new regions. So, you know, the CFO doing due diligence goes to the, the airline that they're they're targeting somewhat smaller in a new area that go out to eat and without really thinking about it, they do what, what we do. You go online, you go on Facebook or Yelp or, and you say, Hey, I found this really cool bistro. It's just around the corner from cool. No worries. Right. We do this people. I mean, it's notorious, right? Social media, because people put everything they're eating, thinking, dreaming about wearing, like who cares well here's the thing this innocent and innocently intended host catches the attention of investors who see that this cfo is in a city where they've got no business being they don't even fly there what are they doing there oh such and so small carrier they have their headquarters there huh i wonder if something's going on and now the stock prices move on the strength of this one Facebook post about some cool little restaurant. Sounds far-fetched, but it happens all the time. So here's another, um, and it's got a little commentary here. Uh, these are pulled right out of things. You can find yourself plenty of articles like this online. Um, there's a situation on uh, one of the social media uh, avenues, uh, Facebook in this case, um, there's some sort of a harassment thing going on between an employee and a consumer. And they're going at it online and, huh, lo and behold, company gets sued. So what's likely to happen there? Those posts are now discoverable because they're out there. And part of the challenge is because they're on Facebook, you, you, I mean, yeah, you can take them down, but are they really gone? Are they deleted? I mean, it gets ugly quickly in these cases. Um, that's an obvious problem because of the harassment going on. But the fact that it's on social media, it's a, it's a record. Whether you've declared it so or not, it's there. And here's another one. Uh, you have a user comments on a state agency post and wants to know more about what's what what the governmental uh, unit has had to say. So you know there is this thing about public re uh, uh, requests for for municipal records or state records. Guess what? This could be considered a formal request. This is from New York State, and it quotes here the 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 rule under which it would fall. And guess what? Things that fall under that rule have a state mandated retention period. And what if you miss it? You don't respond in time, then you're in non-compliance. So these things are real. They exist. It is happening to the point where the National Archives, NARA, um, 
which many records people certainly turn to for guidance, has a policy on it. They wouldn't have a policy on it if, if they didn't think it was necessary, if it was really no big deal, if it was really the antithesis of records keeping. Because that's the business that they're in, let's face it. So the answer to the opening question is, no, they're not antithetical. In fact, in a lot of cases, social posts are actually the records. And we need to figure out how to act accordingly. And at the very least, if we can't do something about them immediately in terms of the, the, the means of capturing and managing them, we at least need to be thinking in terms of policies we can develop so we have something to present to an opposing attorney or a court or even just the public that doesn't make us look foolish when we say, oh, well, we didn't think of that, because that's never the right answer. So that's 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 my story, and I'm sticking to it, and I'll stop sharing if I can find the button, which seems to have gone away. <laughs> All right, Steve, we'll see. I, I, uh, I see the, uh, the risk and the constraint and the potentially the lost opportunity here with all of this i guess the question in my mind is now what now what do i do about this so what should we do how should we factor social content into our silos uh social content silos into our records management efforts where's the first place that i should start well first what do, what do they say the uh i'm sorry I'm, is it still sharing i it won't hang up maybe I somebody don't can do so no Oh, good. Okay, because it's go. showing me that it's still sharing, and it's like, that shouldn't be. <laughs> Sorry about that. Help me, technical gods. Well, I say the first um, the first step in fixing a problem is acknowledging that that you you have one. Um, so there's a whole long list of questions that you need to start asking of yourself and colleagues and organization to try to map out the territory. Um, Nina, don't kick me, but I'm gonna I'm gonna jump the gun a little bit. I actually have a list of like 22 of these questions that you can have. Um, Ames got them as a as a resource. We'll talk more about that specific thing later on. But what are the you know, top it starts questions with, I should ask? Well, it's it's I mean you start with you know, like do we have a policy? And if you do you have a separate policy, one for Facebook, one for LinkedIn, one for Twitter, because you probably shouldn't, because there's going to be new things coming along all the time, and then you need yet another new policy, and it just gets confusing. So like all this brouhaha about Twitter, so a lot of people have gone to Mastodon. Do you have a Mastodon policy? I bet you don't. So it's that kind of thing. And then who's responsible for posting? And who, you know, who has, who's responsible for make, who writing the posts? And assuming that it's not already on your information landscape, where would it fit? Do you have a category of records that it would fit into? Or do you need a new one? So a lot of this is going to be very individual to each individual organization. But... I guess, sorry, I'm kind of rambling on. I, I, I think the answer is to think about this the way you would any new record type. Because you're going to be dealing with them and you need to figure out, do we need to keep them or not? And if so, which ones and what are the criteria and for how long? Never mind the technology that you're probably going to need in order to capture them. And I'm talking about only external, of course, right now. But Kevin, you hit on a moment ago, internal stuff too. You know, if you've got some sort of an int intranet, are you still using that phrase? I still think it's a good one. Uh, that's the 25 years of experience talking. That was from year 26. <laughs> um, what if a decision so, gets made? You're talking about it. Even at, uh, you're using Slack or you're using, you know, pick one. And you're talking about, hey, how do I handle X? And you get an answer. Is that a policy now? Probably, maybe. 
So the first thing I need to understand is whether or not I have a policy with respect to social content. What are some of the elements of a good policy that I should consider? Who has access? Who's who's authorized? Um, what's the nature of the beast to consider whether it's records worthy or not? Um, do you have the tools necessary to apply records to information moving about your own organization? Um, do you have technology that can monitor your Twitter, say Twitter feed, the public feed, and automatically capture the tweets, the tweets, that's tweet and posts put together, the tweets that people are sending your way? There's lots of metadata embedded in those that you can use as a lever, but are you doing it? Have you thought about it? Do you have a tool that can do it or do you need a new one? All kinds of, of questions without answers in most cases, certainly not complete answers. So it's a, it's a, it is kind of like settling the Wild West in that way. You got to do a little homesteading. Go stake a claim and then revisit it over time because things will change or you'll find you've got social media to deal with that you didn't anticipate. What do we do with that? There's a difference between a customer complaint online that you have to respond to and somebody just saying, you know, hello. <laughs> hmm. You got me wound up. I'm kind of rambling. So, so Steve, so you mentioned we've been talking about social content, sort of external stuff, you know, perhaps. What part should internal social communities and customer facing social content play in our strategies? Uh, it's it's probably perhaps even a broader um, question. So let's say you've got an internal wiki, you're working for a tech company and you've got an internal wiki because to help new hires, you wanna help new hires get up to speed on how to do particular technical things. Um, a, does that count as social? Maybe, especially if it has a chat function where you can send questions to other people. Um, B, how much of this should be policy? It's our policy to handle this kind of information in that way. So I think of privacy stuff. You know, I was at a place where there was such a wiki and it had really good information about how to handle particular classes of information, of data, and a little bit of an explanation as to why, which I also think is critical. So people understand these aren't just made up rules because somebody had nothing better to do one day than to say, I know what we'll do. Let's mandate some things. Because I think that helps with the uptake of any policy, to tell you the truth. Even if you have to tailor that message, depending where in the organization's users live, I think that that saves a lot of time and energy in answering future questions if they kind of have an idea of, well, what's the big deal? So how can social networks help us improve the performance of our organization? Once I get my hands around this, I can, I'm can i better managing, I'm better governing this content, uh, irrespective of the, of the security side or the compliance side, yeah. how can social networks fuel better workflow and pro boost process improvement? Well, I've always believed that content, and I'm using the phrases interchangeably, I usually just say stuff, content, data, information, stuff. That the stuff and the process, there, there are opposite sides of a single coin. Because many processes, to be effective, virtually all, I'll, I'll wager, require good information if they're going to be effective processes. I don't care how efficient it is, if it's, if it's communicating the wrong stuff, it's not much help, really. And the same is true the other way around. The greatest information in the world, if it can't get from point A to point B, you might as well not have it. Um, so 
if you think about um, the, the wiki that I was talking about, um, or the chat, or you know, whatever you're using Slack, or it would be nice to set it up in a way that could at least monitor the various threads for particular keywords. So that somebody can review those on a periodic basis. Maybe it's too much to do daily or hourly, but maybe every week or two weeks. I mean, you figure that out for your own uh, best practice at your own company and see, is this discussion noteworthy? First, second, is it records worthy? Because again, there may be questions across the executive team saying, huh, how are we gonna, we had this thing happen. How are we going to handle that? And right now it's a conversation, but a if let's say a decision gets made, it would be nice to have a button that says, make this a policy that either does or sends it to the records person to create a policy or, you know, however your org chart looks. The, the, the good news is you can immediately feed that content, apply a veneer of intelligence to it, and automatically insert it into some kind of a workflow. And I think that's incredibly powerful. And that also is true, even though your question had to do with internal stuff, the same is true with external. To basically scrape the feed somehow and get it inside and do the same things, utilizing things like the Twitter handle and the time and date stamp and the hashtags as metadata to help sift through it all so that you can decide, does this represent some kind of a record by itself or a record in the making? Or maybe it doesn't, but huh, we just got a whole bunch of those over the last six months. Maybe we need to look at something that's going on that's triggering all this conversation. So how can we use this approach uh, to move the needle in terms of things that matter to uh, the organization in terms of things like customer experience and organizational performance? How can proper social content management uh, influence these things? Uh, I'll give you examples out of my own life. How's that? Okay. I hope everybody's sitting down. Uh, two different instances. I was having some issues, two different vendors. Um, one was a cable provider and the other was a bank, notorious for up and down customer service kinds of things. And I was getting so frustrated, I said, I'm gonna take a page out of the populist book and I'm gonna put something on Twitter. Because a lot of companies now are monitoring their Twitter feeds. And I think that's smart. Now, in one instance, never heard a thing. And it led me to wonder which is worse, ignoring it <laughs> or saying something unhelpful as a response. I never came up with a self-satisfactory answer to that, by the way. The other responded almost right away and said, let's do uh, a direct message conversation. Tell me what's going on. And while I... I, di I didn't get the resolution I hoped for, and it was my own fault because I didn't understand something in the in the language. So they were actually in the clear, um, but they responded. And I asked them, you know, did you respond somehow because I've been calling for three weeks? And say, like, no, our social media department is something completely separate, but we monitor the account. And we saw you had a question and we wanted to get back to you. Now, internally, what happens to that? Do they log it? Do they attach it to my account somehow? This wasn't the person to ask, so I, I don't know the answer to that question in that instance. But I thought it was a very powerful tool to use for customer service to the point where I think every organization, especially a public-facing one, needs to be doing this because it, I mean, I'm, I'm a professional skeptic, okay? That's what it says in my job description. But it left me feeling heard. And so much of customer service is just feeling heard. 
And when they pointed out my error, I was like, oh, okay, thanks for explaining it. Now I feel like a fool. No worries. And I'm still with them. And for this and other reasons, I'm not with the other. It was just too hard. All right. We've been talking with Steve Wiseman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group. We're talking about the social uh, social network's impact on information management and what we should do about it. Steve, we've been talking about uh, organizational performance, things like customer-facing uh, content and, and workflow and the process improvement. But what about the 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 risks and compliance risks and uh, and other kinds of uh, fiduciary risks that might be uh, we might be overlooking with social content. Can you describe the risks implications of social content and what we should do about it? Yeah, well, for one, I'll just sort of refer to the opening the opening of my slides, the uh, the mythical uh, airline CFO tweeting from the restaurant. I made that up not to embarrass the the guilty, um, but that was bred of a couple of real world instances that that I had learned about where those innocent sounding things turned into a real problem. Um, there was one. I wish I could remember the person's name. It was very public. Um, sad to say, I found the name very difficult to pronounce. It was from somewhere, I, I, I think, uh, in South Asia. But that person got in trouble with authorities on the strength of a single text, not a tweet, not a blog post, a text message that allowed him to be hung on insider trading charges. And so... It quickly can unravel. Now, that person was up to no good. Our mythical CFO really was not, but it still affects the stock price and things. So the risks are real. Um, the example that I showed uh, about a government agency receiving uh, an inquiry through a social post, there are... I, certainly, well, I'll, I'll go as far as to say there are rules, state, local, and federal, about how quickly you need to respond to such things. So you could easily be non-compliant because, oh, well, that just came in over Twitter. It doesn't really count. Well, guess what? It does, or it can. And it, it, it's it's the same kind of easy trap as years ago. And I'll I'll turn to my friends uh, uh, on the chat who are in Canada, maybe can help me out with the specifics. But I remember that there was a Canadian federal agency that ended up using a, a Google AdSense to help with its its website, and got in trouble because that was based in California, and that's not in Canada. And I didn't think anything about it because it was just so easy. So that's not social media per se, but it's the same kind of mindset. It's 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 another reminder of why we need to take care before we just rush into making a decision or making no decision at all. Oh, it's fine till now. No one's ever sued us. We're in good shape. Well, think of it as an insurance policy. It's straightforward enough to do that I always recommend, and as I said at the beginning, that, that organizations at least have policies about it and be able to demonstrate that you're, you're, you're building towards a solution. Are there tools that can help us with this? Uh, I'm sure many of the folks listening today are going, okay, I get this, but now what do I do? Are there tools that I can enlist uh, that will help me manage my social content, both internal and external? There are tools um, in forums like these. I always hesitate to mention examples. A, I don't want to be accused of favoritism, and B, there's always new stuff popping up. Um, but generally speaking, there are APIs and other ways to interoperate with these things. If you're if you're a paying customer, because guess what? For most people, they're not paying to use Facebook or Twitter or anything. How do how do they make money? 
this is one of the ways they make money. I mean, advertising, sure, but um, so there are tools. I'm a really big fan of using metadata for these kinds of things. Um, and not just social content, but really any kind of information that could be records worthy. You know, a news feed, um, your own company's RSS feed, if you want to monitor things that are going out to make sure. By being smart about the keywords that you're looking for, you can automate virtually all of this. By, by running through this corpus of information and plucking out the things that seem and smell relevant and then analyzing it to see. You know, match it up against your records classes and see if there's overlaps. Or as I mentioned, look at things that smell funny, but they don't seem to fit in a category, should they? So short answer, yes, there are tools. Um, it really just requires the commitment to do it, I think. We are with Steve Weisman from the Holly Group talking about social media content management and information management. We will be getting to your questions and comments here in just a moment. So please feel free to uh, to jump, jump in at the Q, with the Q&A feature and ask your questions. Uh, maybe what are you doing? We'd like to hear from you too. What are your suggestions on how we can better manage this process? But Steve, um, one last question. What steps do you recommend for our audience today that want to take action? Ask the questions. Maybe this is the segue into the guide I put together, um, which is designed to be a tool. I mean, add, subtract, multiply, divide as you need to for your own organization. Um, but it's hard to make any kind of go forward decision without having the answers to a lot of these things. Often I find that, especially somewhat larger organizations, there is some of this in place, but nobody really knows about it because it's so compartmentalized. So, you know, you may already have something to, to build on. So like the local police, thinking of a local government now, the police department very often has its own social media presence, as does the fire department and the city clerk's office. Whether they're being governed by the same set of, of retention rules, say, uh, is an open question. In my experience, the answer is generally not. Nobody ever really thought about it because it's, it's, it, it's quote unquote easy to do and quote unquote it's free to do unless you trip over something and then it's not free anymore. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Steve. That is Steve Weisman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group. I would like to open it up for our questions today. So if you have any questions for Steve, please feel free to jump in and do that. We do have some questions, Steve. Um, starting with Megan, um, perhaps this gets back to the tools question I asked, but Megan is asking, Steve, do you see this as primarily a manual process? That could be a lot of data to sift through. What do you say, Steve? I say, ideally not to use some of these tools. And I see friend uh, Michael Devana has put in, thank you, Michael, the tool that that uh, that he uses. I don't know if everybody can see the chats or not. Um, and what is that? I'm sorry. I don't he, see it's right called here. Sprinkler, but there's no E at the end. <laughs> not a misprint, he writes. Um, I am How a big believer in automating everywhere you can. Um, there are well-established and highly effective tools to, to parse through piles of data, looking for keywords. Um, that's an obvious place to start. You set it up to run overnight every night or every two weeks or whatever you decide is, is often enough. Um, as I say, in, in so many of these kinds of contexts, the, the really important thing is to do something. Do anything. You don't have to eat, as they say, the whole elephant in one bite, and you probably shouldn't. But there's no reason not to get started and at least get a feel for what your circumstance is and how much data are you talking about. 
if your company is active in the socials, you're going to have tons of stuff. And I'll venture 80, 90% of it is going to be just let it pass on through and out the other end. But what remains may well require your attention as a records or information governance person. And you don't know till you know. So you got to start looking. All right, we have another question from Barry coming in. Barry asks, many local government records retention control schedules are silent on the management of social media content. Can you provide a strategy for categorizing that content? Um, it's hard to do that here because there's so many ins and outs. Um, I would say that as, as a first step, look at your existing schedule. And look at it with a social media hat on. And, and think about it in terms of, do, do we get or send internally or externally content via a social channel that could fit into one of these categories that we already have? Or do we need something that's social specific? All right, very good. Well. Can you give us an example of one organization that has been successful in managing their social content in ways that matter? What did they do? What were the results and how can we do it too? Well, can't can't give away state secrets, unfortunately. Um, the best I can tell you is I have worked with companies in the public and private sectors, or I should say organizations. Um, and in fact, that's where my sort of soup starter list of questions comes from. Melding all of those, because those organizations to a greater or lesser extent did those things and was, were able to come up with policies different from one another's to some degree and tools to get at least get started on it. Um, sorry, I don't mean to steal your thunder. I happen to have the chat open. Um, and uh, Lena wrote that she had a consultant that advised to take snapshots of social media in the event of litigation, which I would say is better than nothing, but maybe only a little, because without that metadata, how are you going to find them again? That's the hard part. You have them, and then let's say you get hit with a discovery demand. Somebody going to have to look through all of these one by one or year by year? I mean, it's all about what happens after those images are captured. And of course, as images, they're not searchable necessarily. So these are the things to wrestle with. Steve, we have another question coming in from Sonia. Sonia asks, many customer relationship management platforms integrate with social media. How useful would these be to managing social media content as records? Theoretically, incredibly. but. It's all about what what system is it and what are its capabilities and is it a module you have to add on or an integrator you have to work with? You know, the 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 underlying concept is pretty straightforward. And theoretically, I would dare say that any information repository slash manager slash whatever you want to call them tool could do this it's a matter of is it configured or equipped to and do you have the storage necessary and the network capacity necessary if this becomes a thing do you have a department that can handle it do you need a new one and the people staffing that that role i mean it depends where where you are is, is that a union function? Because I did have a client that ran into union rules trying to do, it wasn't social media, but it was the same kind of, how do we capture this stuff from, and they were ready to go until the, 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 sh the shop steward said, you can't just do that. We have to create a role within the union to cover that. And both, this is a long time ago, but both the client and I were like, Oh, yeah, I didn't think of that. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So it quickly becomes more than just the tool is my point. uh, Another question coming in from Julie. Uh, Thank you, Julie. Um, You mentioned risks mostly related to external problems. Are there risks on internal use of social media or are they reduced? That's an interesting question. Um, There are certainly risks. I don't know how to define reduce necessarily. Certainly, a reduction in risk can come from you have more direct immediate control over content that that is released because you can't control the public as much as people sometimes try. Um, But there are risks. You know, there's a mistake in the wiki. So not to be dramatic, but oblique reference, the the O-rings shrink when it gets too cold. Nobody caught that. So there's no step in the process that says, don't let them get too cold or use a different formulation of rubber or, you know, sadly, at least certainly here in the States, it tends to be very litigious. And so while I don't like embarking down these paths on the strength of protecting from litigation, you do have to think about it. Even the harassment example, if somebody's being harassed over internal Skype or Zoom or something, and there's a record of it, whether it's a video or or a chat, it's the same risk as external, as was the example at at the start of the call today. Um, but now you're into a whole host of human resource procedures. So to a large degree, the risks are the same, certainly similar. Um, it's not a bad place to start if you want to start essentially, you know, practicing air quotes. Um, but, but I think the, the pluses and minuses are pretty much the same. Well, Steve, it's been great speaking with you today. We're almost out of time, but before I let you go, one last question from our audience today. Can the argument be made that all social media engagement externally, for example, with the public or customers documents the function of customer relationship management and therefore is a record? That's a lot of records. Well, short answer, yeah, you could make that case. The slightly longer answer is that's why I'm such a big fan of, of 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 metadata to try to sort through it all. So you're really only focusing on the ones that have the highest likelihood of requiring records attention. It is a lot of data. Most of it, I, as I mentioned, I think is going to end up being junk. Happy birthday to CEO Fred, you know, whoever. You don't need to save that. So using the tools or at the very least eyeballing stuff to start will give you at least a sense of how much are you dealing with? Where should this be on your priority list? It doesn't have to be super difficult, but it is, yeah, another thing on the on the checklist of items to do as a, as a records person or an InfoGov person. Very good. That is Steve Wiseman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group. You can find him and find out more at hollygroup.com. Steve, thank you so much for being a part of our session today. Thanks for having me. I I love it. And thank you, everyone, for your thoughts and questions. Um, Nina, I'll put you on the spot because there's a lot of stuff in the chat. I I don't know if there's a way for, for us to see that so we can get everybody answered or not (laughs) sorry this well at this point i would like to turn it back to nina nina tell us more about where we head from here i know we have some things that we want to uh, mention today about the upcoming aim industry watch coming up soon and uh, of course uh the conference in new orleans coming up here in uh in april tell us more nina Absolutely, Kevin. So I would like the audience to save the date because next week, um, the annual state of the information management survey will be released next week. AIMS 2023 industry watch report is currently in motion. 
and we'd love for you to take the survey. So please be on the lookout for that email invite for the survey. Results from the survey will be the driving force behind this year's Industry Watch re report. And uh, some of the findings will be shared during AIM's 2023 conference in New Orleans. Speaking of conference, <laughs> AIM 23 is headed to New Orleans and promises to be a conference unlike any you've ever experienced. This year's theme is content in the flow of work. Um, the AIM 2023 conference curriculum provides you with a comprehensive and proven methodology for mastering your organization's content to operate more effectively, reduce costs, and stay out of trouble. So your role as an information management professional is always evolving. Now is the ideal time to expand your knowledge of automation and analytics to create real business values for your organization. So registration is open and you won't want to miss it. So register now and save your seat. At this time, we'd like to say thank you as we bring this webinar to a close. Um, just a few reminders that we have recorded this webinar so you can catch anything that you want to hear again in a recap email that will be sent within 24 hours. A link to the resources for this webinar was put in the chat, as well as Steve's freebie guide that he's given the audience um, in helping you manage your social media. Um, you'll find a copy of this presentation, as well as that additional resource through that link. And don't forget to take our feedback survey and let us know how we did. So before we close out today, I'd like to ask Steve if he has any key takeaways or last minute nuggets he can leave for our audience i'll i'll bridge one of the things you just said to one of the things i just said which is do something now do anything now and that's my part and then let the good times roll that's the new orleans piece <laughs> all right well that's uh See what i did there good uh motivation and what about you kevin what are some Say we takeaways and comments that you can leave for our audience. Well, my takeaway today is that look, social media networks have a ton of content and both internal and external. And if we're overlooking that in our uh, information governance and information management programs, then we're missing a big piece that that could come back to bite us or could be something that uh, we're not leveraging as an advantage for our organization. So the question for me is, is social content part of my records management program? If not, then what can I do to begin to wrap my arms around that? What are the policies that we have in place? And if we don't have any policies, uh, now may be the time to really start talking in real terms about what those policies should be and investigating what kind of tools can help me get this job done because clearly there's a lot of content out there. Uh, it can't be just a manual process. We'll never get our arms around it. So what tools are available to me? To do that and i think we should continue to have this conversation about social content and how it fits in the paradigm of what we do uh so so that we keep ahead of this and not get so far behind that it becomes something that we just simply can't manage so i want to thank steve and i want to thank everyone for their questions today and bringing this up to the front of our discussion uh, aim continues to lead the discussion in many of these areas and so it's been great to be here today to explore it Absolutely, Kevin, that was very well said. So a big thank you to our contributor again, Holly Group and Steve for joining us today for another wonderful informative webinar. And I would like to say thank you everyone for joining us. This is Nina from AIM saying see you next time.